Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including two upcoming missions, a climate report, and a look at Earth's tilt and how it affects the ice ages. Let's get started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the sun with those same polar coronal holes. Bright active region departing on the south, but top left, we can see another one coming in as the excess brightness point at about 10 o'clock. We'll get a glimpse of that one in about a day or two as the southern active region should be heading out of view at about the exact same time. The solar wind appears to have finally hit its plateau in speed yesterday, that's the purple, but a two-day drop in density, yellow above it, has made the stream a weak one. Even at the peak of the solar wind speed, we can see the geomagnetism was calming already, and that's a nice hint towards our look yesterday at how density was more important than plasma speed in the solar wind stream. In just the last few minutes before video upload, a large earthquake struck the waters north of New Zealand. Luckily, this one was far away from people. Otherwise, it was a day of lower level seismicity. There was an above average rumble inland in Nevada, and we also saw a very rare earthquake on the east coast of Central Africa. Now folks, we know that earthquakes affect major global electric circuit releases up into the atmosphere, and that energy happens to be flowing directly into the cyclone forming offshore at Madagascar. We often see the earthquakes occur as the tropical storm approaches or tracks overhead, but in this case we note that the earthquake ion release is definitively feeding into that weather. By the way, there was also major weather near that rare Nevada rumble, flash flooding in some areas, snow in others. The system is moving east today through the southern states. So let's go to climate. This is the February climate report, and indeed, using just this data here, you get a mostly above average February, although many in Alaska aren't going to want to hear anything about that. Now, normally we'll give them a pass on the polar regions because that's much harder to analyze with so few stations. But alas, we've been hearing for weeks now how the polar vortex is record strong and how it's been incarcerating the frigid Arctic air up in that region. That means the gray zone with no data in the north on this map was indeed deep dark blue, which should change how the world looks at February overall, but then again, that doesn't seem to be how climate change discourse works, does it? Up next, we've got a cool mission from the ESA that could be the first critical step in permanent space exploration. They plan to use the moon as their gateway, one that will open doors around the cosmos for observation. They plan to have a halo orbit around the moon, which is depicted in this animation here. At the bottom of the ESA link in today's list is a graphic for what major components would comprise the space station. And by the way, with that halo orbit, they may be able to keep the solar panels in sunlight at almost all times. Up next, the sun and the magnetism of the sun is now the wanted suspect in solar physics. PolMag is the new project aimed at demystifying the magnetic fields of sunspots, the chromosphere, and the corona. This would complement the ongoing research into electric current modeling of the photospheric region, the pre-solar flare electromagnetic activity that may allow us to see them coming, and the larger fields that reach out into the solar system. The Spanish-speaking team even did the video in English for us. Moving on to a note about the Gulf Stream. Many know it's being disrupted by cold freshwater melt from Greenland and the Arctic. And in addition to seeing its motion fail to deliver the warmer water as far north as it once did, we're seeing the temperature anomaly maps indicate that some of the very cold meltwater is intertwining with the Gulf Stream, almost making a fire hose instability waveform of alternating temperature gradients. And of course, this plays a role in the beginnings and ends of ice ages, and maybe one of the missing pieces from this group's investigation. The team from Melbourne is looking at various ways our planet changes its sun-looking face. There is precessional tilt change of our planet relative to the solar polar axis, which varies over 26,000 years. There's the eccentricity of our orbit over 100,000 years. There's the apsidal precession, which tosses nice clean cycles right out the window. And indeed, the team was able to pick out some Ice Age Terminators much further back in time than expected but are also needing to rethink what's causing their major shifts to be less predictable and even through time. They make a fair guess, but they do ignore all the other non-orbital related matters involving the ends and beginnings of ice ages. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Today at suspiciousobservers.org, we've got Fly on the Wall, our weekly members podcast. We'll hit the top science news of the week and go over that wild conspiracy about the pandemic that might not be so darn crazy after all. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun.
eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.